Thank you for staying with us. The Nigerian Senate is taking bold action to address the alarming number of out-of-school children in the country. Now, following a report by the Chairman of the Committee on Education, Nawal Usman, the Senate has decided to hold a national summit to tackle this pressing issue. Uh, the summit also aims to bring together stakeholders to discuss and find solutions to the problem which affects a staggering 20 million children in the country, according to a 2022 UNESCO report. TJ Suadioye has more details in this report. According to the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, Nigeria currently has an estimated 18.3 million out-of-school children across the country. This alarming figure positions Nigeria as a country with the highest number of out-of-school children globally. I moved at the Senate. Presenting his report at plenary, Chairman of the Senate's Committee on Education, Senator Usman Adamu, warns that this high number could become a potential threat to national security. Addressing the issue of out-of-school children in Nigeria demands constant joint effort of government and at all levels, national and state local and local government, traditional ruler, parent development partners, civil society organizations and stakeholders in education. Other senators made contributions to the report describing the situation as a national embarrassment that should not be handled with kids' gloves. The lawmakers say this challenge must be addressed urgently and holistically. The crisis facing the, our educational system is at the core of insecurity, is at the core of leadership failure, is at the core of a lot of issues affecting the development of this country. It's a serious problem that if we leave it unattended to, uh, it's a kind of time bomb. And once the bomb explodes, it's going to consume us, particularly uh, the northern part of this country. Unless we do proper oversight functions, it's not enough for us to charter plane to Sokoto to go and look at the road, the Badagri Sokoto road. We should also be able to chat a plan to go and look at a, a primary school in Yanya or anywhere, but we are, we are not doing that. So there is everybody's fault. The federal government may be doing enough, but if uh, the idea of counterpart funding has become a problem, that those monies are lying waste for, for, for over 10, 12, 15 years, then we may have to think of whether to re remove the idea of counterpart funding so that states can access those funds for the, uh, for the sake of uh, our future. The lawmakers resolved to convene a national summit to discuss effective strategies to tackle the crisis of out-of-school children in Nigeria. Although the Senate is yet to pick a date, it will convene the national summit to find sustainable solutions to the challenges of out-of-school children. It agrees this is a national emergency and will require all hands on deck. Tijesu Adiri, TVC News, Abuja. For joining us in the studio for this conversation is Public Affairs Analyst Mustafa Iwila. Good morning. Thank you for joining morning. us Thank on TVC for Breakfast. Thank you for and so before this uh, Senate uh, you know, meeting on this, um, we also saw the former president, Olusha Gobasanjo, raising an alarm about the increasing number of out-of-school children and the potential security threats. But how bad is it and how much or how difficult is it for us to really address this? In recent times, we've seen a lot of funding going into education. So thank you very much for having me. And thank you also for bringing this uh, very important conversation to the front burner of our discussion today. So for me, I think that this is really bad. Mm. And uh, for UNESCO to say that we have a total number of over 20 million out of school children, I think is very, very worrisome. Uh, out of school children in Nigeria for me has placed a lot of threat to us as a nation and in a country where we are faced with a lot of socioeconomic problems that is kind of affecting our national growth as a country. Mm. Nigeria has the highest number of out, of out of school children globally and in a country where we have little or no allocation for educational sector. This year's budget was about 24.5 trillion. Mm. Only 2.18 trillion was budgeted for education. And if you see that, that's only about 7.9% of our national expenditure. So I think that for the Senate 
to say that they want to have this national summit, I think is a good step in the right direction. But again, in 2022, the Federal House of Rep had the national summit to address you know, a lot of issues surrounding our educational sector. But again, where is the outcome of, this, of the summit? So are you saying you're not seeing a prospect for the coming summit? Yes, so I think that, I think that with this current administration, the, the administration of the President, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, I think that if you have looked at the trajectory of what has been happening in the last one year, you see that they are taking a lot of decisive actions to make sure that a lot of issues affecting our national growth have been mm -hmm. nipping the board. So I think that, I mean, hopefully we are able to get some solutions from the upcoming national summit, and these issues are effectively implemented. I mean, it's not enough for us to waste cash resources on organizing a national summit. Mm -hmm. What are the fallout of the summit, and how are we able to implement them to ensure that these issues are addressed in our nip in the board? Do we need to hold national summits to find a way forward because these things have been on for a very, very long time. Like you mentioned, yeah. at the point there was a national summit on education. Yeah, in 2020, yeah. And yet we haven't seen a headway. Um, this one coming, uh, is it a necessity at this time, looking at the fact that, like you mentioned, scarce resources will yes. be used yes. to organize the summit vis-a-vis yes. -vis the fact that citizens are uh, suffering, like yes. for instance, uh, yes. they mentioned earlier, a bag of rice is going for over 100,000. Uh, yeah. So do we need all of this? Do, what, is, there, is, is there no other way? So, I think, so I think that the summit is necessary to you know, put together relevant stakeholders to take these issues head on. And I think that, the, I mean, it's possible to minimize scarce resources, but I mean, what we want is solution. Having president, uh, the former president of the U.S. You know, visited this country some years ago during the time of yeah. And one of his commentaries was that having this huge number of out-of-school students is a ticking time bomb for this country. And fast forward to today, we have seen the result of that. Look at what happened. So and most of these students, most of these children, mm. you see them most in the northern part of the countries. Okay. That's why what has happened in the last hunger protest, you saw what all of them you know, were doing, law, you know, total breakdown of law and order, because they are not enlightened. And one of the issues that this brings, one of the consequences of having this number of people in, you know, uh, on the streets not going to school is that it brings about a lot of pub it brings about a lot of insecurity issues, and insecurity issues has also you know led us to where we are today. In the north, people want to go to school, but there's, yeah, but because of the fear of being kidnapped or being killed, insurgency, insurgency, people are people are scared of going to school. We've seen what happened in Dabchi a few years ago. We saw what happened in Maiduguri. Also, another problem where I think that people cannot even education is now very expensive. So the fact very, that, very that, expensive. that's why I asked the question about yes. the fact that do we need it because I, don't you think that rather than have this summit, yes. use those resources to move the, to while the government is trying to fight insurgency in those regions, right? Yes. Move those people who need to get an education to safer regions to have a quality education. Yeah, but if you want to move people to safer regions where we have quality education, we must also factor in the issue of infrastructure. Infrastructure is also a problem. Uh -huh. People want to go to schools at places of their choices, but in a country where we have a deficit of infrastructure of over 30%, it's also a problem. Another issue is also the issue of our minimum wage. People, so, so generally, there's just so many socioeconomic problems and even cultural problems too. If you go to the north, people, people don't really fancy education. I've lived in Yobe State before. I mean, education was almost like mm. they are practically begging students to come to school. school. Mm. So I think that's just going to form, you know, the basis of my next question. Yes. But I want to also, you know, ask you once again about that figure you gave, uh, yes. the UNESCO uh, figure yes. that you gave. Nigeria yes. has the highest number, highest number of out-of-school out of children of school, yes. in the world. In the world, yes. In the world, that's right. Uh, so at the root of some of these issues, because according to that report, um, yes. uh, the worst hit states are the northern states, so yes. to speak. Yes. And at the root of, of all of this, uh, we, you mentioned culture. Yes. Uh, the society itself and also, you know, religion. religion. How is it likely to take, you know, some of these people that are rooted in this kind of things uh, that to an extent believe possibly education is not as needed? How is the government going to address that in that sense? So, the, so it's very easy for the government to address it. Now, if you look at uh, the chunk of the affected persons, their children and they're mostly, they're mostly girls. Mm. So in a, state, in a country where we have uh, fought, uh, Girls within the ages of 14 to 15 being, you know, uh, you know, taken to marital homes and they become mothers at a very tender age mm -hmm. is a problem. So I think that the government needs to put in laws to ensure that, you know, there is always, you know, a age bracket of people who can get married, and also laws to ensure that a average, the, the child of every common man must go to school 
at some point in this country, education was almost free. Mm -hmm. I don't know what has happened to that. Now, if you want to ch send your child to school in this economy, is a problem. An economy where we have an a, a inflation rate of about 32.70% as of last week. And a country where we have an un unemployment rate of about 5.3%. So all these are, are attendant results of not having certain policies in place. But I think with the political will of the government mm -hmm. to ensure that a lot of attention is you know, given to educational sector. According to uh, UNESCO, UNESCO is saying that for a country to, to grow mm -hmm. effectively, you must have at least 15 to 20 percent budget for education sector. But in our budget for this year, mm -hmm. only about 2.18 trillion was budgeted for education. That's about 7.9 percent of you know, the national expenditure. Mm -hmm. So the UNESCO is saying that that's low. So advanced countries that are doing better in terms of education is because they have a lot of budget for education. But in a country where we don't place too much attention on our educational sector, that's why we continue to have these problems. So I think the government needs to put out policies and organize, you know, community development programs. We have the, we have the USAID, we have the gov um, uh, Save the Children. We have a lot of, you know, um, many of these parasitas trying to ensure that the average student go to school. If you go to the streets of Lagos, go to the streets of the North, you see them students at the school hours on the road begging money. Okay, you, you, you also mentioned that uh, schools are expensive. Yes. Um, what can be done about that? Uh, when you talk about schools, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about private schools. Not, not even private schools. Even public schools right now, they're not, you know, then when I was in school, then public school and school fees then uh, was less than 10,000 there. But now, even to go to school, if you... So, no, we've seen so cases we can, where... We can, we can just say you're a Gen Z. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. When I went to school, <laughs> like 25 naira. 25 naira. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've seen cases where we've seen cases where school fees is cheap. But there are other things that you need for you to go to school. Uh, mm. Materials, textbooks, everything is expensive. But I think the government needs to sort of give these schools some level of grants to, to make sure that these things are, you know, subsidized for the parents who, you know, so for parents who has 10 test, textbooks to buy, let the government provide five, let the parent buy five. So this can like, push in the effect of this, you right. know, the whole expenses on the parents. So talking about other things that the child will need, uh, you know, yes. beyond just uh, the, the going to school, yes. paying the fees and yes. all that, uh, we saw the Senate president also saying that we must actually take this education oversight uh, very seriously. It's not yes. just enough to allocate, you know, funds. There should be people that will go to ensure that, uh, the classrooms that are being sponsored and all exactly. that are exactly. running. And, you know, it will address the, the majority of the problems that we see. But now, at a time where we are looking at the subnationals, the state's yes. government, and, you know, when they were reading this statement in the Senate House, uh, they mentioned that, you know, you can't really put the whole responsibility on the federal government. Yes. The state governments actually need to step up because sure, sure. to an extent they are not providing counterpart funds sure. you know, to uh, address uh, the situation. So again, so a lot of us blame the federal government for a lot of things. Mm. And we, have, we usually forget that there's a state government that is supposed to be also very responsible for these things. So the federal government is at the top trying to see how things can, All right. you know, go around everybody. So, you know, just hold your thoughts on All that. Right. Uh, let's quickly go on a break. Uh, we'll be back with more on this conversation. Right, Stay you. with us. Break time when my champ needs to keep going. He's going to need his favorite snack made with the crunchy goodness of Niger grown maize, malt, cocoa, and milk, containing calcium, iron, and fiber. Break time is crunch time. So give your champs this delicious crunchy delight to keep them winning all day. Milo and a snacks, snack of future champions. Is this the new one? Yes, ma'am. And each portion contains 5 grams of protein, 2.66 milligrams of iron, 414 IU, ma, of vitamin A. Move! Mommy, oh, you know what I think it is, mommy? Yes, it is, baby! <laughs> you are the engine of your family. For them to win with the goodness of Golden Morn. Golden Morn. Make every day golden from now. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, right before the break, we were talking about the increasing number of out-of-school children and uh, the Senate calling for a national summit 
uh, to address the situation. And of course, we still have with us public affairs analyst uh, Ewila Mustafa. Thank you for you know staying with us. Uh, before the break, you were talking about the role of the sub-nationals in ensuring that, I mean, this figure reduces. So like I said, so a lot of us blame the federal government for everything in this country, but mm. it's not 100% true. We have a state government that's supposed to also make sure that these things are put in place. Now, in Lagos State, for example, I know that there are six schools in Lagos that, that students are not having a, a conducive environment for, for, for learning. In some parts of Lagos, some interior parts of Lagos, go to Ikorodu, you have them. So it's, so, it's very, so it's very, very important that the Lagos State governor or the governor of any state ensures that there are you know, authorities in, 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 in charge to ensure that you monitor all the schools and ensure that people are, I mean, the schooling environment is conducive enough for students. And also the, the issue of, I think, insecurity, like I've mentioned, is, is also a problem. I think in Lagos, we are, we are fairly having it good. It's fair. But in some parts in some part of this country, it is very, very unsafe for even students to go to school. So if we, have to, if we don't tackle this issue systematically, insecurity, and also to ensure that public funds are you know, used judiciously, schools, are being, schools get allocation yearly, but I do, I mean, how, how, do, how, how do they put those money to good use? Mm -hmm. So ensure that certain things are provided in the schools. You go to some schools in, in this country, there's no fan, there's no chair, students sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. So how are they able to motivate these students to even want to come back to school the next day? So I think that holistically we must, I, 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 I'm totally in support of the summit, and I think that whatever, whatever the, the solutions are provided in that summit, is able, I mean, for me, it's about implementation. We must follow through with implementation. I like the fact that you mentioned implementation, but yes. are, you, are you also optimistic that this summit will involve every face, at every stakeholder in the education sector, and also there will be some form of monitoring? Yes, so essentially there must be, so... The, the things we've seen in the past is that government puts out policies and there's no, there's no implementation, there's no monitoring. Mm -hmm. But if this summit can bring out solutions whereby yeah, the, right, the right policies are implemented and there are people put in place to checkmate that, that implementation is followed through to the end, I think that we'll have some light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. And, you know, in all of this, uh, when he was talking about um, stakeholders involved Stakeholder, in this, yeah. Parents, where do parents come in all of this? I mean, we, we, we're going to have this summit, yeah. and most likely you may not see yeah. uh, the parents that are really affected but by yeah. this situation and all that. So how is this summit going to address, you know, uh, awareness on the part of the parents, especially those restricted by uh, religious beliefs, cultural what beliefs, and other identities? So, 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 so I think that summit will not be doing any justice if parents are missing in that summit. Okay. Because parents are the ones who are the custodians of these children. Mm. And they are the ones feeling the brunt of paying the fees and all that. So now, the biggest problem that parents are going through right now, average parents in this country are going through right now, is after each, the issue of feeding, is the issue of school fees. Mm. We have parents who haven't even paid last term school fees. They're still battling with the debt from last term. And now this is a new term. Mm -hmm. And it's a recurring expenditure every other three months. So if parents are not being taken into consideration in that summit, in that summit if it only happens to be a gathering of politicians, and the, you know, the stakeholders and the government parasitas and Nigerian Union of Teachers, then it's not a complete summit. It must cut across every member of the public that has to do with education. Because whether we like it or not, these things have consequences. The consequences of not sending your child to school is going to be that there are going to be, there are going to be vices to perpetrate, you know, uh, to perpetrate crimes. And we've seen that play out in every part of the country. I mean, look at those that the Boko Haram were recruiting back then during the predominant time then. They were young child, young children. And, that's, and, and, and also the future of this country really lies in the hands of the children. So we must ensure that a average child goes to school. Even in Lagos, you have them still walking on the road, on the streets of on, 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 on major roads, walking, gala, walking, all sorts of things. It is wrong. So that, it is the work of the government to take them off the road and put them into a classroom. So that brings me to the question of public, uh, public schools. Why are they so unattractive? Because in as much as you go to a private school, you're paying up almost, uh, in some schools, you pay upward of a million naira for per term. Yes. Uh, public schools don't pay as much yes. as that. Yet you see many parents whose children are not in school not wanting to go to public schools. Why so, so let me ask you: Can you can you take your child to the current public schools we have now? That's the question. If you ask every average parent right now that the the, the, the state of our public school right now they're, they're in, a in a state of total obsolescence. Some don't even have chairs. Some don't have properly ventilated classrooms. And the quality of teachers also is a problem. 
I want to believe Lagos State is an exemption. So Lagos State, State is an exemption, but yeah, don't don't let's overrate Lagos State. <laughs> yes, the government <laughs> don't let so so. Well, Lagos places, State for one. That's what some, I'm saying. Yes, it's an exemption, but there are some okay. places in this Lagos when you mm. see the school, you 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 you, you will be moved to tears. Mm. So I mean, so but, yes, Lagos is doing better, but so I th so for me, I think that again, the government still has a lot to do. We must take education seriously as a country if we want to move forward. So let's talk about the security consequences of this. Yes. I mean, uh, it, that was a 2022 uh, report, we're yes. in 2024, yes. and so I, I want to believe that we'll, we'll have that figure uh, for the, the latest uh, 2024 figure as soon as possible. But in recent times, you know, uh, IDP camps have also been known as, you know, uh, locations for recruitment of all this, you know, uh, kind of persons, especially yes. in extremist groups. Yes. How's the government going to tackle that, especially looking at where well, the poverty level, especially in that region? So in a country where, if we're talking about poverty, mm. there's no how you can totally take out cases like that. Mm. Because in a country where people are hungry, so it's very difficult. And so an hungry man, the, mm. is the, the, any, the only thing, the only language he understands is food. Tell him what is food. Mm. So tell him what will give, will put food on his table, he will do anything. Mm. So we must first tackle the issue of poverty systematically. Nigeria's poverty rate right now is almost 40%. Mm. In the, globally, 40%. That's a huge number. So we're almost, we're almost, we're almost approaching 50%. So it's, if, at, if almost 40%, and we're talk, there's no how we can stop talking about insecurity because people are hungry. So I think that the government must tackle the issue of poverty first. So in a country where people are, people are hungry, in a country where parents are struggling with a minimum wage of 70,000 naira, which I don't even know if it has been implemented yet, or, or people have started... Some collect, states have implemented, have started, yes. some states are paying higher. Yes, yeah, so, so again, so those, those are problems. So in a country where parents cannot completely, you know, vent for their kids. So I think that we must first tackle these issues from the issue, angle of poverty, then we, will not, then we can now stop talking about insecurity. But it, because for me, I think that for us to really have a country that we love, mm. certain things must be put into perspective. Mm. So for me, I, I mean, I was telling somebody yesterday, look at all the richest men in the world. All of them are educated people. You can never have an illiterate with, 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 with I mean, yes, yeah, of course, we have people who are doing well and they didn't go to school. Mm. But it does not mean that we should use them as benchmark or, you know, as examples. Mm. Because th those are only few cases. Mm. Those are only few cases, so we must continue to emphasize the you know, aspect of education in this country. Right. That's where we can really go forward as a country. And beyond just the, you know, basic education, stakeholders have also been mentioning the need for vocational education. Vocational, yes. Uh, the vocational, need to yes. learn a lot more in terms of artificial intelligence and all that. Yes. All this comes together for national development. But this is a fine place to end the conversation exactly. for today. Uh, we're hoping for the setting to make a decision on Hopefully. the national summit uh, for us you know move forward in terms of that uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, public you, affairs Robert. analyst mustafa Iwila. Thank, thank you very you, thank much you, for, for joining us once again